Thank you, Sasha. <laughs> I meant to do that before I even did the introduction, but uh, did not do it. So thank you very much. Um, got it. So we'll talk a bit about what is the consortium, and I've already started that. Uh, we'll talk about the model that we're using up in Santa Barbara County, and we'll pro provide an update on the Santa Barbara County strategy project. Uh, we'll touch on San Luis Obispo County. We'll touch on Ventura County as well. And then we'll have the round table as we typically have and talk about things going on. And, and uh, certainly want to have a municipality update where the various cities have a chance to uh, talk about those kinds of things as well. So with that, let's go through a round of introductions. Um, I'll, I'll start off Bill Simmons with, a, with the Broadband Consortium. Call your name and you know allow you to introduce yourself, who you're with, and, and just within a line or two, anything else you might want to share. Maria, why don't you go next? Great. Thanks, Bill. Maria Kelly up in Tascadero in San Francisco County, and I'm enjoying working with the Broadband Consortium. It's really fun. Thanks for having me, Bill. Sasha? Hey, I'm Sasha Burroughs. I'm working with Bill and Maria for the BCPC as the communications associate. Why don't we go to Jamie Fleming? Uh, Jamie Fleming, I'm head of the Ojai Chamber of Commerce, but I also am the lead for the broadband efforts uh, for the city. Brian Chung. Yeah, I'm Brian Chung, City of Moore Park. I run the city's public information and legislative affairs division. I also spearhead our broadband efforts. Mike Becker, you're next on his right. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Mike Becker, I'm the director of planning at Santa Barbara County Association of Governments and the project manager for the strategic plan that you'll hear about in a minute. Christopher Moore. Uh, yeah, Christopher Moore. I'm a local government liaison with the California Public Utilities Commission, and I can, you know, work across our business areas, so broadband, energy, um, any any issue where you have any any place where you're having an issue with a private utility. Very thankful to have Chris with us. Dana Stroud. Good morning, Bill. I'm Dana Stroud. I'm the uh, GoBiz area business. Area of Business Development Specialist for the Central Coast. And in this realm, the Central Coast includes Ventura, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, Monterey, San Benito, and Santa Cruz counties. Um, so happy to bring some GoBiz resources uh, to the table as, as we find them. Thank you for being here, Donna. Stephen Sawyer. You'll have to unmute, Steve. You can you hear me now? Yes. I got to get used to this double muting on the computer and my phone, so I apologize. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Stephen Sawyer, Director of Government Affairs for Charter Communications, also known as Spectrum, and I've uh, been with uh, the consortium for several years, I guess, huh, Bill? Mm hmm Certainly have. Jasmine McGinty. Excuse me. Good morning, Jasmine McGinty, a principal analyst at the County Executive Office for the County of Santa Barbara, and I've been working closely with Maria and Bill on the and Michael on the broadband, the strategic plan efforts. So nice to see you all. Steve Weingart. Steve Weingart. I'm general manager with Ridge Communications. We engineer, permit, build, and maintain broadband fiber optic and wireless networks throughout California, and especially in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. And I've been with the uh, consortium, I guess, since 2015. Pretty much near the beginning. Hmm. Nancy Anderson. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nancy Anderson. I'm the assistant CEO for the County of Santa Barbara and Jasmine and I work together. I'm excited on this. We're the, new to, to broadband, so we're getting educated. Um, I'm also the budget director, so uh, our efforts are being funded by um, primarily the ARPA funding that's available, so uh, that's why we're getting involved. Nice to meet you. Hi, Lorelai. Hello, Bill. Um, Lorelai Kappel here, City of Atascadero, California, up in San Luis Obispo County, and the Deputy Economic Development Community Development Director. And I've been 
um, playing with the consortium for the last four years or so, and very excited to see some traction um, and some things moving forward here in our region. So thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Steve Kenny. Morning, Bill. Morning, everyone. Um, I'm Steve Kenny. I'm an economic development consultant. Uh, my client in this case is the city of Port Wainimi. Um, and I'm trying to help the, the city take baby steps into the world um, of broadband, um, motivated by some ARPA funds that were approved for that purpose lately. So I think we'll be, we'll be getting a little more serious. And your cat's going crazy behind you on the tree. <laughs> no control. No control at all. Yeah. Chris Jergwin. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Jergwin. I'm an IT consultant for a company called Landspeed based out of Santa Barbara. And I've been working with Bill and the Broadband Consortium since probably day one. We, we hang the whole idea of a North County fiber ring on Chris. That, that's his vision. And... Uh, now we're stuck with it in a good way. <laughs> George Amendola. He's looking to unmute, I think. Or did he freeze? He must have froze. Let's go. We'll come back to George. Helen Miller. Hi, Helen. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am the new chief information officer here at the city of Oxnard. I'm in month four. So getting up to speed on the county broadband initiatives that are in place and the consortium. This is my first meeting. Um, I had my first meeting with Bill, probably, I think last week, time's flying by. But um, I feel we're very fortunate to have this group in our county and I look forward to participating. Thank you for being here. And Jory Wolf is next to her on my screen. Hello, good morning, everyone. Jory Wolf, Congelid Advisors. Um, we've been working with um, municipal governments throughout the Western United States, um, assisting them with broadband planning, uh, uh, grant writing, and design engineering. Thank you, Jory. I want to give a big shout out to Nikki Mays. She has been very, very helpful with a SCAG grant that we recently had doing some uh, surveys in Santa Paula for us. Nikki? Hi, everyone. My name is Nikki Mays. I am a management fellow in the city manager's office in Santa Paula. And like Bill mentioned, I just did some survey outreach work. So yeah, my focus area in my fellowship is broadband. So I'm kind of the point person for the city and I'm glad to be included in these conversations. Noel Heredia. Hi, Bill. Hi, everybody. Noel Radia. I'm Chief Technology Officer of Digital Value Creation. I've been working with Bill and the broadband team for over three years, developing process models and implementation strategies as we, you know, uh, figure out how we're going to implement them at individual project levels. That's my area of specialization. I hope, you're, like I hope you're watching the road, not us. Well, I'm pulled to a stop, so I'm not watching the road, <laughs> looking at everybody on the screen. <laughs> Delighted to be here. And uh, next to Noel is George Amendola. He's back. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me now. We can. George may have some bandwidth problems. I seem to recall he was going to be traveling and, and he may be even as far as I know overseas. So we'll. He's, uh, he's making the business case for broadband. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Stephen Meyer, VCOE. Uh, good morning. I am the uh, Director of Infrastructure for Ventura County Office of Education. Uh, any, any additional broadband to the area is more than welcome. And then we have Petra. Hi, good morning, everyone. Petra Gomez with the Santa Barbara Foundation. Uh, we're happy to be here. We're here in a learning capacity and also supporting capacity as we know how important this broadband strategic plan is. And so we're happy to go ahead and provide any um, support through data um, or just um, you know a letter of support for this project. So thank you again for your leadership. Gracia Marks. 
<laughs> Nothing. Just observing. Okay. <clears throat> Randall Hernandez. Morning, Bill. Randall Hernandez, Director of External Affairs for Verizon for Santa Barbara County. Thank you for being with us, Randall. And Adam Hendel is doing some great things in Santa Barbara. Adam. Uh, good morning, everybody. Adam Hendel, Principal Engineer, Public Works Department, City of Santa Barbara. It's good to see everybody today and uh, look forward to listening in. Thanks. Luke Knight. Hi, Luke. IT manager for the City of Atasca Bureau. Thank you for being with us. And then Laura Fiedler. Good morning, my name is Laura Fiedler and I'm the Economic Development Manager for Slow County. Laura, thank you so much for being with us today. So, did I miss anybody? Has everybody had a chance to introduce themselves? Sounds great. Let me move forward very quickly because I do wanna uh, introduce Mike Becker to talk a little bit about SB CAG and uh, get it started before we lose him. Um, in, in terms of, I'm going to dispense with the consortia overview and, and go right into talking about the regional model. There's been a lot of conversations to in a lot of different counties about how do we get to where we got to go. And, and what is unique about Santa Barbara County is they've reached a critical mass where the municipalities have connected with one another and, and they've done this through SB CAG. And it goes to the leadership of the county. It's been, it was wonderful when the county said, you know, we're gonna make an investment in coming up with a regional strategy. And the other cities um, said, we're in it as well. I, I give a lot of, I, I gotta tell you, it's leadership everywhere. It, it started with the leadership of supervisors, it was leadership of staff, uh, goes to SB CAG and their board and the leaders in the communities of, of the board which they represent. I mean, everybody's nodding their head as you make city council meetings, everybody says we're all in and, and it's a model. We're, we're, we're sharing it with the CPUC, we're sharing it with the other two counties and we're, we're very, I think it's gonna be a best practice in terms of where things go. So basically we, we have a, a project that's underway. We're gonna be developing you know, convenings and, and, and conducting interviews and gathering data. And the whole purpose without me wanting to steal Mike's thunder is to uh, end up with a strategy. And, and I don't wanna say shovel ready, but I, want, I do wanna say grant ready. As they continue to work on funding in Sacramento, we really do wanna talk about middle mile, last mile in digital inclusion and have all the municipalities equipped to as soon as those funds are ready, know when they arrive, know how to make the application, have CPUC briefed that yes, these applications are on their way and they really are ready to receive the funds and, and, you know, and apply them in the areas of need. So with that as an introduction, I can share with you the strategy, introduce Mike Becker with SB CAG, and uh, sorry, Mike, to, to go so much into your time, but you know, wanted to give you a chance to talk about the project from your perspective. All right, thanks, Bill. Um, yes, and I do apologize in advance. I have a conflicting meeting at nine o'clock that I can't get out of. Um, but I think uh, what I'm about to say, I think can really be complemented by, you know, Bill and Maria are carrying the torch forward. And before I was involved, Jasmine of the county was involved. So she could potentially talk a little bit about um, before I got involved. Uh, but first, I think it's uh, important to note um, what is SB CAG? Uh, because especially for the folks in Ventura County, it's not the same down there. So um, SB CAG is the Metropolitan Planning Organization and the Regional Transportation Planning um, Agency. And both of those are focused primarily on transportation. And we have a couple other roles uh, related to airports or land use through RENA, which is a council of governments function. But in Ventura County, you have Ventura County Transportation Commission, which serves part of that role. And then they, you also have Southern California Association of Governments or SCAG, which fills another part of it. And Santa Barbara County, it's all fulfilled by SB CAG. And SLO County, it's all fulfilled by SLOCOG. Um, so we are essentially our member agencies. We are the eight cities in Santa Barbara County, as well as the county, and our boards are reflective of that. 
uh, the eight cities in San Barbara County are those that Bill had on the previous slide plus Guadalupe. Um, I know they're small, but uh, they're not forgettable. Uh, so, you know, we are one of the few agencies or organizations that has a regional coverage. Um, I think otherwise, the one that's in the news right now is public health has a regional coverage or um, LAFCO has a regional coverage, um, SBCAG's the other one. So that is SBCAG. Um, and then where we get into the story is, and I think where Jasmine could probably add something before we get into the story, was um, several of our board members started approaching our executive director saying, hey, what about broadband? We see through the coronavirus stimulus funds, there's money for broadband coming, the state's making it a priority. What are we doing about it? And ultimately, I think it comes to that question of where does it belong? Um, you, you need something with a, a countywide reach because broadband doesn't stop at political boundaries. Um, but who has the capacity, whose purview does it fit under? Um, and so we ended up stepping up to the plate and our executive director, Margie Kern, and Bill and Maria went around to every single jurisdiction in San Barbara County trying to get support saying, hey, we want to develop a broadband strategic plan for the San Barbara County region that will you know, position us for future funding to, um, to, to receive some of these grant funds coming from the state and federal governments. Um, what do we have to do to get ready? Uh, this is a step in that direction. So um, Bill and Margie and Maria went around city by city and got 100% support with, to participate. And because this doesn't fit neatly into what SBCAG is typically funded to do, we couldn't provide our own funds. So we had to ask for funds to do it. Um, there was a formula that was um, developed with the county paying 50% of the overall cost and the other 50% being split by the jurisdictions based on population. Uh, we had a complete agreement with that. Uh, there's a couple of the public agencies, the county and the city of Santa Maria that chose to use coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds, which adds a layer of complexity to the process in terms of developing a subrecipient agreement and then also ensuring that your work complies with the federal guidelines. Uh, but it, we got it. So. Um, I'm the director of planning at SBCAG and 99% of what I do is transportation and not transportation of bits and bikes, transportation of bikes and cars and trucks and planes. Um, so th this was new for me, but it's a planning effort. And my title says I, I'm in charge of planning. So it, it landed with me. Uh, and ultimately, I think what we want to do is there has to be an education piece. What is broadband? Why is it important? I know people learned a bit about it through the pandemic. Um, what are the existing assets in the region? What areas are not served? How are those areas, um, you know, are there uh, disadvantaged communities that are unserved? Where are they? So you can draw a picture. So here's what's currently served. Here's what needs served. And then the, through looking at, um, some disadvantaged issues, you can potentially start to prioritize. So I think the, then there's two other steps. Number one is to look at potential ways to serve these areas. And I know through Bill and Maria and Sasha, we looked at a couple of tools that are out there that help you get to that point. So would have, what is broadband? Why is it important? What do you have now? Um, what needs to be served, and then how do you serve it? Um, so then the final piece is probably the most important is where does it go? Um, because that's what the one question that nobody knows the answer to yet is when this project is done in September or October, who carries the torch? Does the SBCAG is a transportation agency, not saying that we can't do it, but we would have to uh, kind of change the, some of our focus and potentially hire new staff to, to be the broadband <coughs> project manager. But ultimately, yeah, that's so we'll have a plan that positions us well with understanding what our needs are and potentially how to serve them. It will position us to 
um, be competitive for state and federal grant funds. Um, and then still trying to figure out that last piece of the puzzle of um, who's gonna carry the torch forward. But I think uh, that's about all I got. And I think um, Bill and Jasmine could potentially add more on the front end of that. I, you know, I think Mike, that was a great overview. I think you kind of encapsulated pretty much every, all of our efforts. Um, you know, the county got involved and uh, Nancy could speak a little bit more to this if there's anything I'm missing, but um, we did decide to use ARPA funding to help pay for this um, strategic planning effort and then partnered with SBCAG um, as a subrecipient to kind of take the lead on the project. Let, let me, uh, Mike, anything else you want to add? I thought we may, maybe I'd turn to Maria Kelly to just kind of do an overview of this chart and then in the project description. And, uh, that works. And uh, again, I do apologize. I'm going to have to drop off in about two minutes. Okay. That, thanks, Mike. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Yeah, so it's a very ag aggressive, maybe I shouldn't use the word aggressive. It's a very optimistic and achievable process. Um, we have moved right directly into, um, we're, we're pretty much on track right now in the February, March portion of the project where we're really, we've, we've set up our data collection tools. In fact, we're excited to announce today that we'll be able to launch our, um, our survey. Um, a needs assessment survey that will go out to the Santa Barbara County citizens and be running for several months. It takes a long time to collect the data that we're going to want to collect, and then we can target outreach from the areas that we feel are missing. Um, so we'll be able to hit that mark on time. Um, I'm working with the chambers. I'll be meeting with the cha all the chambers of Santa Barbara County today to um, also help with this outreach. And I, and after by the end of today, I'll have met with three cities. So just really moving through and keeping that engagement level high and keeping this in front of mind and, and getting people to you know, help us collect the data that we need to maybe basically justify it, as Bill said, stand up cities to ready to be asked um, to apply for granting. Um, through March, April, May, and June, we'll continue the outreach. We'll be holding open stakeholder forums in each city and in areas of the county. Bill and I will also be reaching out to CSDs and other anchor institutions and just helping them be aware of the work that we're doing. Um, we are actively um, engaged with um, setting up the, the a GIS map and assessing what layers to be included so that planning efforts can be made by all municipalities, recognizing that each municipality has different challenges and what the goal, one of the many goals of this project is to get the municipalities ready to be public, to be the public sector partner in the funding that is coming down from the infrastructure um, package out of Washington, DC, as well as the broadband for all um, financial, broadband for all um, grant potential <laughs> um, coming out of California. So it's really hitting all these targets. And what that means is we have to look at accessibility, affordability, um, and access, um, accessibility, affordability, and making sure that we can close that, um, the digital, help close the digital divide. So Santa Barbara, again, is super unique. I'm super appreciative of all the municipalities willing to dive in and really be a part of the planning process. That ownership in the early part of this process is going to help with the implementation and answer that question of, okay, how? Once we've got all the data and the information, what is the next step to make sure this infrastructure gets deployed over the next several many many years um so very exciting to keep an eye on we'll be keeping we will be going to cities um to present to city councils in the next month and about next six to eight weeks um as we can get on agendas and make sure each city is also aware of where we are in the process and making sure that they know that their investments are being spent wisely um and happy to answer any questions any questions, any discussion, any thoughts about from the north, south, and in between? I'll, I'll jump in from more park and just say bravo. Um, you know, we're kind of, to kind of quote Green Day, kind of past when November ends for you guys, uh, where we've done that asset inventory and now we're reaping the rewards and looking to actually build things. And those are all necessary steps. And uh, I, I'll, be happy to validate you're heading in the right direction. Thank you, Brian. There's Julie Judd. Thank you for joining us. 
I'm sorry, I'm late. I had a couple things pop up. Okay, so any other questions uh, concerning the Santa Barbara County project and the topic that we we're discussing at this point? Okay, sounds good. We'll keep everybody abreast. As I said, this is the first deep dive for uh, Santa Barbara as a county. Uh, we'll be talking to Terry Theobald uh, about a deep dive in, in the meetings to come. And uh, we'll also be talking about uh, to the leadership of uh, San Luis Obispo County uh, to be talking about that area in, in the meetings to come. And then we'll circle back around and provide you with a Santa Barbara County update three meetings from now. That's the plan in terms of where our meetings are going and we'll keep moving. Ventura County update. Uh, Jory, I, I'm gonna kind of put you on the spot. I haven't, we haven't had a chance to catch up over the last couple of weeks, but I thought you might be able to give us, to talk a little bit about the Middle Mile project of which uh, you're our key resource. Uh, certainly, Bella, thank you. Um, and good morning, everyone again. Um, we have um, gone through the process that I believe that the county of Santa Barbara is going through. Ventura County, um, over the course of the last year, has engaged with over 140 stakeholders within the county region, including all of the cities, the water districts, the um, uh, Ventura County Transit Organization, the EDC, uh, of course, working very strongly with Bill of Consortia. Um, and also working with SCAG uh, as well. We have, uh, through the efforts, we've put together an uh, inventory of the assets that are owned by uh, both county and municipal governments and other public agencies within the region. We've done an RFI and solicited interest from various stakeholders, uh, service providers, and other investors in the region who would want to contribute their assets and participate in building, joint building, investing in or operating a county and municipal owned uh, fiber network. Um, what you see here that Bill is showing you on the left is the middle mile plan that was completed after looking at the assets. The assets indicated to us um, as what we need to build based upon need within the connecting the cities and connecting all of the points, although you don't see the points on the map here, but there are over 175 uh, anchor institutions, public facilities, um, and other assets so that need to be connected, including, of course, buildings, towers, um, and um, uh, other devices uh, out in the grid. We have designed a network that is um, going to be uh, taking advantage of existing assets and as you can see here, the, the map shows the routes that will be built um, in phases. And you see in red, uh, you see the, uh, the actual new underground construction. Uh, in dark blue, you see the use of existing aerial poles uh, for uh, installing fiber. Uh, in uh, green, you see existing traffic signal interconnect, which is being used. In light blue, you see uh, projects, uh, water projects, and other public agency projects that will be joint built to reduce the cost of uh, installing. And in yellow, you see existing uh, fiber assets um, on the map. Um, there, uh, this, this particular approach was used to lower the cost and to use existing assets and projects that were in the works, CIP projects and other state funded projects. Uh, to be uh, to enable us to reduce the cost. Um, we had over 14 responses from the private sector who are interested in participating in building and or operating or investing in uh, this network. Uh, we have also worked with uh, Brian uh, over at um, Moore Park. We have worked with uh, those um, before you, Helen, over in uh, the city of Oxnard. We have also worked with the city of Ventura on their master plans and have incorporated those needs into the overall county plan. We're now in the process of 
organizing um, continued governance. And we're also brought in a grant writing company that will be assisting uh, the county in preparing grants that we're going after, um, both at the state and at the federal level, based upon information that we've collected from the 140 some odd stakeholders and all the interviews that we have done. We've also, um, we are including, of course, this network to be redundant. It is underpinned by dual route, um, two internet points of presence, one in the city of Santa Clarita outside the boundaries of the county of Ventura and another in Agoura Hills, uh, also outside the boundary of the county of Ventura. Um, these um, partners, so to speak, um, outside of the county boundaries are participating in many ways with their own conduit and infrastructure um, and will be sharing in the overall cost of governance of uh, acquiring services from the state open access middle mile network, as well as commercial networks that are already in place in Agoura Hills and in the city of Santa Clarita. Um, we are um, in the process, we've identified three grant sources already and we are going to be starting the effort to prepare for those grants. We have already reached out to the EDA as one of the grant sources. We've talked to Wilfred Marshall. We have socialized the project with him for phase one along the 126 alignment between Santa Clarita and the city of Ventura connecting <clears throat> Piru, Santa Paula and Fillmore and the city of Ventura to the first leg of San the city of Santa Clarita, which is also a client of ours that has already perfected through a plan that we did for them connections to one Wilshire downtown. Uh, we are um, going to be starting that uh, effort with the EDA with Wilfred uh, um, as we speak, and we are will be working with the state on future grant opportunities through the coronavirus $9.8 billion funding, which went to, uh, of which 400, 540,000, I'm sorry, 540 million went to the, uh, the state of California, and it will be applying for those capital project funds, as well as a lot of funds, which will be issued by CASF over the course of the next few weeks. Um, and we'll be doing that for digital inclusion, focusing on the underserved areas of El Rio, Satakoy, Nyland, Acres, and potentially Somas as they first build. Um, looking forward uh, to continue our conversations uh, for governance and our, uh, with public agencies and our conversations with the private sector for investments, joint build, and uh, operational components. Thank you. Back to you, Bill. Thank you, Jory. And, and just want to give you a weather report. Um, that I've been sitting in a number of meetings in the last week or two where the state, the Middle Mile Network Initiative, you know, how do you define what Middle Mile is? You know, and, and my position is very, very strong. It's what the local community defines it as. You know, we know what we need. The work that Jory and his team have done, you know, clearly talk about what we need. We've gone through a stakeholder-driven process where we know what we need. We're doing the same thing in Santa Barbara County and Slow County, and is, is talking about it as well. What the communities need is the interconnect and the redundancy and the disaster recovery in, in, in this design. And, and yet we've seen a lot of holes in the in the conversation at the state level. And, and so you know how this all unfolds the the grants that are being written coming from the federal government you know the investment that we're going to be looking for in terms of arpa dollars and, and the, the such it's, it's a very very active conversation and, and there's a lot of forces at work but you know i'm i'm after supporting jory you know for the last number of years in designing this i'm all in you know we, we this is a, a great model we're, we're looking to create the same kind of picture and the other two counties uh, when you talk about the middle mile and the important thing about this conversation is that these networks connect between the counties and, you know and so you do have good redundancy and interconnectivity throughout the central coast so thank you jory the other thing i'll, I'll say before we jump into the san luis obispo discussion is uh, communities in oxnard as, as well as santa paula the, the communities of, digi of, of you know, disadvantaged communities, we're, we're going to be really wanting to look at the last mile digital inclusion conversation. It's so easy to say we're going to address that. I want to really focus on the how. 
Yeah, it, 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 everybody's talking about it. I haven't seen it done yet. And, and so I think it's going to be very important as these funds are made available to have models, to have processes, to have projects that demonstrate outcomes. And so dealing with the, you know, the local municipalities, the social equity groups, the technical people that understand it's not just enough to have a connection, but we've also got to tackle literacy issues and, 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 and provide, you know, all kinds of different remedies, interventions, and, 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 and support uh, mechanisms by which we can have all boats rise. You know, that whole conversation, you, they're just words until you see it done. And, and, and so it, it's very important that uh, we pilot certain approaches and then point to successes. You know, and, and, and I think that's going to, I'm really hoping that we can, you know, develop a few pilots here. Sataco is another area here in Ventura County that we're, we're looking at potential pilots for, for the whole digital inclusion conversation. So with that, um, we'll move to the next one, San Luis Obispo County. Uh, Maria, I'm gonna turn back to you and you can kick off that conversation. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for that update. So in Slow County um, right now, again, I, I joined the consortium in December. So I've been pretty, pretty quick trying to re-engage the county, county leadership, um, city managers, elect, um, staff, local staff. Um, and the focus of the outreach has been to really encourage this um, regional development. And I'm so glad Jory brought up that point about that there's going to be assets and resources outside your county boundaries that are going to be really important to the success of county infrastructure. And that was one of the things that was a driver for this um, Santa Barbara County project was we have these North Southern um, San Luis Obispo County and Northern Santa Barbara County, both very rural. Um, and we need to be able to not sort of see that area as a fluid area of planning versus really looking at being restricted by those boundaries. So I love that example. Thanks, Jory. Um, it will help us, regional strategy will help access funding. We've sat in on many webinars um, over the last several months, you know, whether it was whatever the funding, you know, even sitting on listening sessions right now on the infrastructure grants and um, NTIA listening sessions. And everybody is speaking to the fact that regional planning is where we're gonna be most successful at being able to access funds and leverage communities, you know, uh, other community support. Isolated communities, isolated grant applications are not necessarily at all gonna be considered. So a city going out on its own saying, hey, we just need this, it, it's not gonna really, um, it's not gonna be as effective as unless we have multiple cities saying, hey, we're doing this together and this is how the region rises. So excited we've been talking, I've been talking more focusedly with um, Paso Robles and Atascadero and really in that conversation that the that really what they're becoming, a, what we've known for a while for our North County is that the lack of that connectivity and diversification of opportunities and provider carriers is that it's really having an impact on economic development. It's actually a deterrent from businesses being located there. It's actually a, 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 a high bar for um, Paso Robles being able to develop their spaceport um, and their vision for what they have on building out the area around the airport is the lack of connectivity. So it's really, really important to help that entire North County area get connected and be able to encourage resident, you know, as well as deal with residents and in digital inclusion. But from a business standpoint, um, just having some issues there. Also with them um, far up even north with um, Camp Roberts. So being able to build a, a, a bigger vision for the county is really important. It's going to help a lot in um, potential future grant funding. There is some great infrastructure in San Luis Obispo County. We need to daylight that and be able to create more access to it. We need some off-runs for Atascadero, um, more extension for Paso Robles, and we've got county unincorporated areas in between. We've got infrastructure running, great infrastructure running through San Luis Obispo County, and now we need to get connected. Um, and it's gonna take all of us working together to do that with the public sector being a key partner and um, getting more private sector to the table. So really excited about what we're gonna be able to do and really focusing on that, the broadband for all um, and increasing the speeds. And Lorelai could speak to speeds at her office in the city of Atascadero. Um, and then a lot of the work that we're doing right now is also really identifying opportunities for digital inclusion starting to try to engage more of the public housing, um, people self-help housing, making sure that new builds or even current build or current, you know, current organizations 
um, that have um, residents. Um, we have some really great um, public health, public public housing authority um, populations within our county, and making sure that they've got access to, to fiber and infrastructure as well. So those are all the highlights of what we're work, focusing on right now in San Luis Obispo County, and also hoping to get this model, the Santa Barbara model, and sort of see if there's a way to flesh out an opportunity for the county to plan collectively as well. Happy to answer any questions, but that's Slow County, unless someone else from Slow County, Lorelei, or um, wants to jump in and talk a little bit more about it, um, that's where we are. Sure, Maria, thanks. Um, so yes, we have our leadership in our city is very excited and very focused on prioritizing broadband, and they have been, so we're, doing everything we know how to do to move things forward, which is engaging with our neighbors that want to um, work on this initiative as well. Um, Paso Robles in particular, we're just at the beginning stages of crafting an MOU and looking at what an RFP would look like to um, do a strategic plan for our county. We hope that all of the neighboring cities will jump on board and like to join us, but um, we don't feel like we can wait um, to you know, have everyone come together. We just wanna get the train going, but of course bring everybody on, including stakeholders, um, you know, anchor institutions, all of those folks along the way. So um, we're very excited. We're looking at all of the things that you all have done in the past in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties to make sure we're in alignment and we can even possibly be a much, much larger region uh, together to bring funding down amongst the three counties and really be a solid consortium. So. Um, Thanks for all of your leadership. We feel a little bit behind, but we're here to catch up and we're all very focused on, on moving forward. Thanks, Lorelai. I think that's it, Bill, unless there's other questions. Any other questions? <clears throat> so in terms of the transformation of these meetings, I think we're about 50% there. I, I think as, as we, we were planning for this particular conversation, um, we, we wanted to, to, to make it more tri-county-ish, and, and I think we've done that. Also may want to move the date around a little bit more. You know, I, I know this conflicts with Terry Theobald, and he wanted to be here, and he's got a standing meeting that he, he's not able to do. So we may you know, do some jockeying a little bit for, for, for his benefit as well as an advocate. Um, Content-wise, we want to get as more and more specific, you know, talk about specific initiatives, specific lessons learned, specific updates. Uh, but I, I envision a slide that'll eventually be all of the funding, you know, and timelines coming. So we can really keep track of what's in the pipeline, what's headed our direction and the relevance for us today to get ready for something that might be 60, 90 days from now. And, and, and so the more instructive and specific we can get for you, the better, I, I, I think. Um, and so I think we'll be making some additional tweaks in terms of content and ex expectations for, for the meeting as well. Bill, well, um, just a suggestion, uh, especially in terms of uh, uh, next steps and going after funding. I think there's been some good examples of, of cities um, that have um, been awarded various grant funds. And I think it might be good at some point in time for some lessons learned for them to be able to share that experience. Totally agree. And, and I was talking to Sasha earlier today, I want to round out our, our, some of our activities with some aggressive webinar programs where those kinds of cities can be brought in. And I was talking with Kevin Pisasich yesterday. Um, you know, he's uh, still in Oxnard for the moment, but he's headed towards Connecticut this ne in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, he'd, he'd be happy to come back after a month or two in Connecticut to say, this is what the state of Connecticut has planned. And, you know, and anytime you have friends and relations that uh, have lessons learned that, we, that, that can bring back and help us, you know, it's good to see them. And it's also good to get the, the new perspectives, uh, you know, and, and talk about some of the things that they're facing and, and learn from that. So uh, I, I recruited him on the spot to be a webinar, you know, later in the year uh, that we, we could, you know, have a working lunch kind of discussion in terms of where he's gone and what he's doing. Yeah, and we should also include Dave over at the city of Paso Robles. Um, they recently received EDA funding into the amount of uh, 3.7 million for their network. Yeah. So th those, uh, it, it, it's exciting. And hopefully a month from now, we'll give you a lot more of those kinds of ideas that we can look at in terms of a calendar and, and an agenda that will benefit all three counties. 
So here's the round table. We're right on time. I wanted to just leave it open for folks that uh, are able to give updates uh, for municipalities, certainly from industry as well. Uh, you know, Randall, Stephen, you know, anything, anything you want to share in terms of your companies, uh, Steve Weingart from a, a fiber uh, installation standpoint, uh, uh, GoBiz, uh, any of the county perspectives, you know, happy to have, you know, to, to yield at this point for your, your updates of what you're looking at. Steve Kinney's already said that, you know, Port Wainemi is starting on its strategy. I don't want to, if you want to go into more detail, Steve, about that, you know, we'd love to hear it, but the time is yours at this point. And, uh, Brian, hey, hey Bill. Go ahead. Hey, Bill. It's Randall Hernandez from Verizon. For, yep. Well, first of all, thank you very much to BCPC for your leadership and talking about broadband way before it was fashionable. It just seems like the last two years, because of COVID, has really spurred a focus on broadband, both wireline and wireless. So we really appreciate that. Um, I would say from the Verizon side, we are closely monitoring the consortia in the municipalities as they move forward with their plans or, or wish lists for both federal and state broadband funding. Uh, we, of course, want to be a partner where we can. So we're right now just sort of monitoring all the different actions. We're taking a look at different routes that might make sense for us. Um, but a lot of detail to go on. And I greatly appreciate the work you're doing, and particularly the work that's now finally going on in Santa Barbara County. So it seems in a lot of ways, they've kind of been uh, late to the table. So but we're glad they're they're developing this broadband plan and we want to assist in any way we can. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Randall. Next, anybody else? Sure, yeah, Bill. Bill. This is Steve from uh, Charter. I just wanted to echo what Randall said about, you know, working with the consortium and I wanted to thank you and uh, the various cities that have assisted us with our CASIV uh, grant applications and trying to get uh, service into those you know, unserved and underserved areas and really appreciate the support and the help uh, in submitting our applications to try to get more funding to, to, to connect those uh, communities. Steve, we can't give up. Yeah, I, I, I'm, the emails are flying around and if there's the, another ways that we can uh, you know, crack the nut you know, and, and get uh, some of those areas taken care of, let's keep those applications and grant uh, funds coming, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Mr. Kenny. Yes, sir. Um, thanks, Bill. This was actually very eye-opening for me because as I viewed the map that you put up of the Ventura County projects, um, it became clear to me that uh, geographically speaking, Port Wainimi really is the last mile in, in Ventura County, right? I mean, there, there is there doesn't appear to be any kind of loop that we're a part of. <laughs> so, um, I mean, an, uh, unless it makes sense for us to tap into some undersea cable that's just off the off the coast, uh, it it's clear to me that our future lies with um, the interest of the city of Oxnard to um, uh, to move forward quickly. We we need to partner with that city and. I was glad to hear that you're encouraging the discussions about servicing um, the uh, disadvantaged communities, uh, because I think that's going to be our link to um, to Oxnard and probably the if if there can be a fast track, that would be the fast track to uh, get us uh, further along towards um, sort of meeting up with the progress of the rest of the county. It was very interesting. Thank you. Um, if I might, Bill, um, Steve, please know that when we uh, speak later um, in this week, um, I'll share a little bit more about connectivity for Port Wainimi. Um, there, as you said, there's very uh, key components um, and a relationship with the city of Oxnard that the map currently isn't showing, but the engineering has been done. Um, please know that further conversations will probably uh, surface all of this um, as we speak with with Wainimi and with Oxnard, but um, Oxnard and Wainimi are included in the Ventura County plan, and I can share more of that uh, with you um, uh, at a later date. Uh, but please know that um, the, the the same process uh, and engagement was done with Oxnard and Wainimi, and in the event that things don't work with your neighboring Oxnard, 
for whatever reason, there are other routes that have been engineered that are being proposed. Great, thanks, Sherry. I'll look forward to our conversation. Yeah, and Bill, if I could just uh, join back in here, I just wanted to bring up the issue of uh, adoption and affordability, because I know that uh, uh, for a lot of the, the new participants in the, in the call today, you know, it's all about connectivity and getting you know, neighborhoods connected. And a lot of neighborhoods are connected, but the digital divide is, is caused by either the, the cost of internet and the affordability. And uh, even if they can afford it, some are skeptical of, uh, you know, going on to the government's uh, um, uh, discounted and, and free programs just because of the amount of information that's required. Um, so I, again, just wanted to bring up the issue of affordability and adoption in addition to the discussion about connectivity. Thank you, Steve. I wanted to mention and thank, and thank Julie Judd for being here um, and, and, and do a mea culpa of sorts. I was sharing with her earlier this week, or maybe it was the end of last week, that um, I, I really felt remiss that I had not done more in terms of uh, partnerships with education. And, you know, we, we talk about municipal networks, and yet she's got a staff, she's working with professionals in all the school districts. They already have a scenic network of sorts as a partner. And so there's a lot of lessons learned that I it, the thought occurred to me, we haven't even begun to tap into. From the digital divide perspective, while we've been talking about it, she's been fighting that war. I mean, very clearly through the pandemic, they were trying to figure out how to keep the schools connected, people working out of their homes. She's learned more of what to do and what not to do than we could even think about. And yet I felt like there was a gap that needed to be closed on our part to reconnect with her. And so I'm just glad that we've made that connection and look forward to an ongoing conversation with her. Thanks, I appreciate it because it does take a village in the education space. And I've been very frustrated with this broadband conversation since I started this gig in 2008 because the middle mile's great, but the last mile is really important in an educational environment. And we have some areas um, we have one very small school district that has to spend $10,000 a year just to light up 10 homes. And thank God for partnerships, um, because without those partnerships, we wouldn't have been able to do that. And we, I spent, gosh, I can't even tell you the number of hours driving around with various hot spots trying to figure out how the heck do I get these poor kiddos connected. It's a challenge and it's real. And the density issue um, in low-income housing in apartments and condos and stuff like that that's they you know they don't come under the umbrella of they have a problem and access issue but when the um, availability is less than appropriate to do the work because most of what we're doing is streaming now and yada yada i'm preaching to the choir but um thank you for every all these faces all these windows on the screen Thank you for the work you're doing because uh, kicking and screaming, we're going to drag this country into the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Maria. That made me laugh. And then Helen Miller, we're just so happy that you've joined us and welcome to your new position and welcome to this group and uh, so happy that you're here. Thank you. I'm very much, uh, I'm very happy to be here too, and a big advocate of the whole, um, really the digital equity speaks to me, and I'm looking forward to making material impacts in the quality of life of our communities, um, you know, the county in general, and and I was privately um, I am being uh, Steve saying I'm looking forward to working with him in Port Wainimi because I understand the geographical uh, limitations there, Port Wainimi there at the, the end of the county. So, um, yeah, this is great. And um, I want to make sure we keep the momentum moving forward. And I'm a bit jealous of, of what uh, Santa Barbara County is doing. Um, I'd like to see us get to that point where we have this cohesive plan um, and and. I'm not familiar, Jory, with what, what in the county, I'm not up to speed. Again, I'm, I think I just 
I'm in month four right now. So, so, you know, I'm kind of just drinking from a fire hose with everything. So um, I look forward to engaging with many of you individually in discussions or collectively so that um, I can get up to speed more quickly and we can start making progress um, together. Thank you for joining us. Brian, you're, you're usually a man of uh, many words. You've been very quiet so far. Oh. No, I'm just waiting for others to, to chime in first. But, um, so, so middle mile infrastructure for more part, we've done the studies and you know, we, we are largely served residentially and we have you know, our focus area is more on the commercial side and we have unserved areas. Uh, so what middle mile looks like for us is reducing the cost of entry into the more park market. And the big tool we have is the possibility of constructing a meet me room. Uh, we're geographically centered in the county, unlike Port Wyneme, and that gives us certain advantages of, of doing that. So we commissioned a market study by Jory's firm. Uh, they actually delivered a draft of that to us last week. Um, I have only read the conclusion. I normally read books front to back, but in this case, I went straight to the ending, right? And what it basically says is that our fate is tied with the county network. So the, the, the worst thing that we can do is spend millions of dollars building something that just sits empty, right? And to ensure that that building is used and, and serving as function and paying for itself, essentially, uh, we need the county network to go. So we have a, a, a saying here that we've used several times that Mike Pettit is our favorite county employee. And he and his team, to, you know, we're, we're definitely behind them. And, and we are working you know, very strongly behind the scenes uh, on getting funding for the county network. Um, we've also been working with Charter and actually we were one of the recipient communities of, I forget the number, but it was in the high hundreds of thousands of dollars in CASA funds that are lighting up an unserved neighborhood here in Moore Park. Uh, so that does work. Um, Time-wise, uh, we are planning to take our market study results to our council by meeting later today, but it looks like it's gonna be March 16th to our council to let them know the results of the market study and then have them make some decisions. Um, one of those actually is with our ARPA money. So uh, whereas I believe Santa Barbara County in that effort was using their ARPA funds to do the studies and whatnot, we've already done that. Uh, so what we're up against is, you know, using ARPA money to construct a meet me room, uh, but we have to, commit those funds by 24 and actually spend them, which means building it by 26. So knowing that we have to go through multiple phases of a county network before ours becomes viable and looking at that 2026 date may be you know, a challenge, right? We don't wanna risk losing this money. Uh, the other thing too is, is our council has actually again last week, did their first distribution of our ARPA funds, about 8.7 million here in Moore Park. And 7.7 .7 of that has been earmarked for other projects with a million dollars remaining uh, for 10 projects that we are vetting as a staff and bringing back. The good news is that out of the original 86 projects that were sent to the council, the Meet Me Room is actually one of the 10 remaining projects. Uh, the challenge though is that this will cost more than a million dollars to do which means we need to get more funding elsewhere too so there are some challenges there but we're still you know looking at this and you know we're throwing our support uh, squarely behind the county to make their network and our project and our community a priority and that's where we are today thank you brian daniel i see that you joined a little bit late want to just do a self-introduction and catch the the crowd up with, with that you're here Maybe not. One sec. Okay. Um, hey. Hello. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Hey, my name is Daniel Adello. I'm a transportation planner with the San Luis Obispo Council of Governments. It's a pleasure to be here and hearing all the various efforts and what everyone's doing. Um, so as to what we're doing, um, we've been paying attention to all the talk about broadband expansion implementation and then We've done our fair level of research too. And what we've come to the realization is like broadband's great, but fiber is where the game's at, <laughs> what we really want. Yes. And then so as an MPO for the region, we've decided to embark on something called a broadband action plan after reviewing what our sister agencies have done around the state and what of course is going on in this group. And then so 
we're hoping to put together a, just a broad just a broad plan a plan for the region to get ourselves in a position and to see what what's currently in our county in terms of infrastructure and what we need where the gaps are and so forth to do that analysis uh, we've spoken to UCLA, got some of their data, and we've been collecting from other data sources, of course, the FCC and CPUC, uh, the California Public Utilities Commission. But of course, those data sets have their own things to consider, uh, considering that they're self-reporting from the, the utilities and the internet service providers. And so we're interested in more about little ground level true things. So of course, finding those internet speed tests to see what exactly our speeds are and where, where in the region they can be improved. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. Um, in February, we got per permission from our board to pursue this broadband action plan. So we'll probably contact, well, I know there's been a lot of work with the jurisdictions, the conversation with our jurisdictions already, but we'll be working with them more in the future to kind of, and then reviewing this with them as well as we go forward. So that's kind of what's going on with Slocog at the moment. Thank you. Daniel, thank you so much for just being here and, and keeping us updated. And uh, we, we appreciate that. Congratulations on the journey. Yes, you're right. The physical highways and the virtual highways, there's a lot of parallels. And, and it's uh, a lot of lessons can be uh, translated across. Uh, and so uh, having the fiber superhighway is an important asset for, for the region. Any other updates? Well, we welcome your feedback always, and uh, just thank you for your support and participation in being here, and, and feel free between now and the next meeting to give us any yellow stickies or thoughts or emails or whatever to what we can do to do this better, and uh, we'll keep working on it. So uh, if there's no other updates, going once, going twice. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.